Hello, this is Josh Spicer from GameWisdom.com. Hope you enjoy this video. Hello and welcome to a Spotlight of Clockwork. This is an indie game that I got a press copy for that I saw was just released on Steam. I'm always in the mood for a new action puzzle platformer. And I wanted to check this out. While the game features a very interesting and good looking aesthetic, I'm finding the puzzle solving to be a little bit lacking, but we'll take a look at that. Now the game is split into different worlds, and then there are levels within each world, as you can see. Now one thing to keep in mind, even though there are a lot of levels here, most of these levels don't have anything to do with them, especially these early ones. So I'm going to try and skip ahead to when we first get our abilities. We play as a young, or I guess young-ish, uh, it's like a steampunk robot who just found out that his pocket watch, let me get the mouse off there, which you can see glowing blue, can, has a little, has a spirit in there and wants to get to a generator inside this massive tower. Now the game looks amazing. So, that was a level. <laughs> Alright, let me head back out. So it's just so we can get to the actual puzzle solving, because this first chapter it features a lot more of the exposition. So I think it's here. There we go. So our main power, what we start with, is the ability to rewind time, essentially. Trying to fast forward. So how it works is we activate the power by hitting these strange artifacts, and then we essentially get five rewinds, so watch. Now that guy, our little after image will now repeat everything that we've done, and as soon as we do all five. There we go, so it's off. If you play Braid, you'll have a good idea of what kind of puzzle solver you're going to be using in Clockwork. You'll need to make you so you'll have to do actions. Thank you. And then use and then repeat time so that your after image will do that action, letting your main body through. So you can see that right here. And as the game goes on, Millie will unlock more abilities for you. The only thing that's interesting, the game does feature boss fights, so I'm curious to see how they will play out. Alright, so, as you can see, that's gonna go up. So, as you can, uh, the puzzle solving, and it's more about understanding the timing of when you want to perform an action and how that relates to when you or your main form will be able to get back there. So. And this seems to be a little bug, too. And you can see all my little after images doing their thing. And while you can die in clockwork, it'll simply just repeat the level. Movement is a little uh, stuttery, a little bit. As you can see, when I move and jump, I lose all momentum when I land. It's not like Mario where 
or other platformers that you jump, you land, you just keep your velocity going. Now this part was a little bit annoying when I first did it. The reason was I jumped on the wrong way apparently, and the platform was not going. Not sure if that was a bug or just how I landed on it. But again, gotta give yourself enough time. Watch me go. One thing that's a little bit annoying is that, unlike Braid, it's a lot harder to restart or remove an aftermage if things weren't working for you. So this time, I'm going to be making use of multiple after images. Now we could have also just used one and let him do it all, but I wanted to show off the clones and your time travel. Okay. Should be enough time. And as you can see, there's a mysterious story going on below us. Come on. Go team. In the early parts of Clockwork, it doesn't feel like the puzzles are really, like, evolving. A sense. One of the things that's good about games like The Swapper or Brave was that it never felt like you were repeating the same tasks. They just kept changing things by adding new elements or challenging you to use your powers in different ways. So, let's watch this. Usually if you give yourself like a good 10 seconds, that should be enough time to get around and do these things. are coming to where I stopped playing before I did this recording. There we go, he's gonna pull that. Now we won't go too far, I would like to do at least most of the first world or this grind town, but again anything that I show is going to be a spoiler. Watchtower, that's the place we've been in. And this was just a exposition level. complicated here. And yes, those things will kill you if they hit. Now we have to activate our time power. to make some quick actions. You run out of your five spirits, then you're going to have to restart the puzzle. 
Millie is not being forthcoming with who she is. Dive and fall. <laughs> Again, at the start of the game, it, it's definitely repeating a lot of its puzzle elements. Like, this feels like it should be more complicated. At this point, in terms of what we've learned about making these after images or shadows, I'm hoping that whatever this boss fight is at the end of the world will really make up for like the powers and make things really amazing. Another warp back. There we go. Press button one. Alright, so now that we have that power. I think you can see what we're gonna be doing. So again, you pretty much need to give yourself enough time, or you're just going to be losing characters. Yeah, thank you. So that was one. Okay. Now we have our double team. Our triple team. Come on, me, do it. Mm, better get rid of this generator. And the game has. I like this kind of almost like hand drawn art style to it and like the steampunk feel. Alright, so I'm assuming we pull that switch, sends the platform forward. What we have up here. Okay, that does that. There's a way to fast forward. Because we are going to be waiting a few seconds, maybe even a minute or so, while our guys do their thing. Okay. That.
actually I can do a little bit better here. What if I pull this back? Is it going to screw with him? No. Now we're getting somewhere. Oh. Hmm. And now we gotta repeat it. You would think if you had time affecting powers, you could rewind and save yourself. Maybe that's a later power. Now one thing to keep in mind, it's also adding to the difficulty, is the fact that I have no control in air. This is an example of committed jumping. So when you're trying to drop down off of platforms and such, it's very hard to gauge that. It's better just to jump like Again, you can see that the puzzles aren't really taking a long time to complete in terms of solving them or understanding the mechanics, but in terms of actually operating them. The 5 uh, reflection limit definitely feels like an arbitrary uh, condition, I think. Yeah. Especially with how the platforming works. You can essentially lose, quote unquote, lose a life if you mess up on one of these jumps. And it's why it's safer yeah. to do multiple actions with one reflection, but as you can see, it's going to slow things down. So now he's going to go up. Yeah. And once again, I'm going to have to yeah. jump. And we can break the laws of time and space by letting them just float along. This should give me enough time to let him turn the steam off. Yeah. Or should I say let myself turn the steam off? The challenges of talking about quantum physics. Okay, can we make it? Yes. Oh, not bad. I 
wish you could like erase one of your after images so you can repeat a section again. Let me see, what's our time to? We're about 22 minutes in. Like I said, we'll go to the end of this first world because I really want to see what they're doing in terms of their boss fight, and then that will do it. Now again, the puzzles don't feel like they're being laid out in a growing organic matter. As you saw, I'm going to pause for a second. The puzzle we just did, 117, was a hell of a lot less complicated than World 116. Good puzzle design should present things in order of complexity or challenge. And it kind of feels... doesn't feel as refined as it should be with clockwork. Right, so here we go again. Give myself a good five seconds, and go. There is the switch down here. Switch number two. Again, okay, trying to give myself enough time. very haunting in their appearance. We should be coming up to the end of the world. Hmm. Nice little screenshot. That's the achievement I got. <laughs> oh boy. Guess this must be our boss fight. Yep. Thank you, game. <laughs> Okay, so it's going to kill us. No matter where we are in the level. If he gets rewound with time too, we're going to be in trouble. Oh, that's good. I still have to rewind, uh, rewind time 
and get things to change. Eek, that thing is cunt. Ow. <laughs> As I was saying, that I had to rewind time so that I would stay there so that the doors would be switched. Now here's the question, how do I dodge this guy? How do I get forced back here? I thought the checkpoint was supposed to hold. Okay. I'm not sure if that's a bug or a feature. Alright, so let's try this again. I can just leap over his attacks, or this is gonna be a lot more frustrating than it should be. No, I can't. Ugh. Okay, why isn't the checkpoint working? But I think this boss fight is showing my main problem with clockwork. It doesn't feel as refined of a game idea as I would like. The puzzles don't feel like they're in the right order. The game is, I think, having trouble deciding if it wants to be an action title or a puzzle game. Like, we're seeing a lot of action elements here that are more focus then actually trying to solve these puzzles. Okay, so this is gonna be annoying, I think. Oh god, come on, game. Okay, that's very, very annoying. I will give them credit for trying to come up with a boss fight that makes use of these powers. But th this is not as refined as I would like to see. Okay, so from what I'm gathering, you have to manually hit that checkpoint each time. That's another bit of sloppiness, I hate to say. Okay, so now he's gonna come up. Down. As you can see, there is a delay between when I pull that switch and when it goes off. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Now, what? may be another switch after this one because I am not having the time. Nope. We Hope you enjoy that death uh gurple. I 
really hope that works. We're in trouble. Later, loser. He's gonna come from the left, isn't he? See, they are repeating these puzzle solutions or these puzzle designs quite a bit in the game. Sometimes, especially when you're combining puzzles with other genres, less is more. It's better to have, I think, five unique puzzles than ten puzzles that all operate on the same kind of design. Okay, so he's gonna stay right there. That ain't good. What, did he forget about me? Do that same trick again. Come on. It's closer than I would like. I mean, the first time doing it was okay, the second time it's getting annoying, and then the third time it's just getting frustrating. I want to say, but I won't wait until the end of this fight before. So I want to see if they actually do what I'm thinking. up yet? Tell you. Here's another thing, the checkpoint I think should be closer, because we're repeating, or we're going to repeat extra actions with it this far away. I want to 
see something here. Which does what I think it's going to do. The timing is definitely very tight in this game. Oh, come on. I keep using the word sloppy, but I think that's the only way I can describe this. It doesn't feel, again, like the refinement is just not here compared to other puzzle games like the Swapper, Braid, or even other platforms. Again, the checkpoint should be further up here. to do all this. No pun intended by the fact that we are dealing with time travel. Oh! Hmm. I think I know what needs to be done then we have to delay him while we're below him. I just hope that I can actually dodge his attacks, and it's not just an auto-lock. Okay, so I go over here. see something here. Oh, damn you. Yep. Actually, I'm not gonna have enough anyway. Again, the five limit just feels like an arbitrary number. That's making this extra frustrating. This is the part where I need to delay him. Or I need to delay the action long enough so that I have the time to run. This works! Damn, that's close. 
Okay, that should be enough time. Oh, wait, I just realized I may have screwed up. I may have given myself too little time. No, I don't want to be on the ladder. Ooh. I think I just barely uh, screw that up there. <laughs> okay, so that was that level. Alright, I'll tell you what I wanted to see for that fight. Once we're done with this cutscene. was hoping for for that fight was to use my reflections to distract the boss or maybe lead him into things to hurt him. Something to really make a creative use of the power, but as you saw, they just really repeated the same elements throughout that entire fight. Oh, I guess we're on chains now. much it and you can't climb up these chains so it is more committed base actions no he's not talking all right well I think that's going to do it for this look at clockwork again I like the aesthetics, I think it has an interesting story, but it just feels sloppy in its execution, in terms of its puzzle design, what's asking the players, and even just coming up with creative uses of its powers. Now that was most of chapter one, as you can see, and we start chapter two. So it looks like there's three areas, or there could be a fourth one. It may just be unlocked at the end. But I'm not sure if I'm going to play all the way through to it. Unless you guys want to see it, let me know in the comments below. But this is Clockwork. If you're in the mood for a puzzle platformer, and you like this kind of aesthetic, definitely check it out. But if you're in the mood for something that was as refined, as polished, as braid, the Talos Principle, and of course the Swapper, Clockwork may not fit that bill. But that's going to do it for this examination. Thanks so much for tuning in. As always, if you enjoy things, be sure to subscribe to the channel and check out Game-Wisdom.com. Once again, I'm Josh Beiser from Game Wisdom. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you all real soon with some more great video content here on the channel. Take care. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoy it, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And of course, share with your friends. It always helps out. For daily posts on all manner of game design and industry topics, check out Game-Wisdom.com. 
To support the site and everything that I do, be sure to check out the Patreon campaign. If we can hit goals, it will mean more content for everyone to enjoy, and I'll be able to support myself and my household. If you want to follow me, you can find me on Twitter at GWBicer for updates throughout the day and random thoughts from me. And lastly, you can find me on Twitch right over there at GW Bicer for daily streams most nights around 10 Eastern. Thanks again for watching the video, and be sure to check out more great content coming to the Game Wisdom channel real soon.